Welcome to Celtic Stuff Live on the CLNS Media Network, the leading online provider of audio and video coverage for the Boston Celtics. Justin and John here and opening night. Well, for the Celtics tomorrow night, opening night for the NBA uh, happening as we literally speak and record this podcast. So everybody out there, I think getting a little geared up, getting a little excited. Uh, Interesting preseason. Not a lot of games. Uh, Kind of a weird preseason for me that way. I'm used to seeing a few more games few more of those joint practices things like that in the past and um but uh i also kind of like it because i think it's uh, probably going to help these players stay healthy and you know we're hitting the reset button and so hopefully we're going to be back into a little bit more normalized training and off-season schedule for all these guys and yet um you see everybody on twitter complaining oh here we go again <laughs> can't start the season healthy uh So Al Horford inactive uh, for the first game. And John, I kind of want to start with, you know, uh, what are your predictions, you know, for opening night? And I'd like to start with what is the starting lineup? I don't think it's been announced yet, correct? No, it still has not. not. Yeah. So we're still wondering who's going to fill that, who's going to fill that hole. And uh, with Horford out, maybe there's two positions that we're not certain about. Yeah, no, I think that's right about that. I mean, I, I, so it looks like Jalen is, I think, questionable. I think is what they've termed it um, to play tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm good with that. Like, I think that that's um, perfectly. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I thought it was always questionable, honestly, as to what was what what could happen. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think that let's assume Jay. I'm going to assume Jalen's healthy, so I'm going to go right with smart. Brown, Tatum, Rob Williams, because I'm going to assume the knee is good enough for him to play. And now we're down to what? We're down to one spot, right? We've been talking about this all year long. Where do you go? And I'll tell you, I'm going to go with the guy who we talked about so much after that last show and then, you know, really had a couple good good showings, I think, in the preseason. And that's, that's Romeo Langford. Yeah, I'm going to put it on Romeo. I think he's the guy. Um, I think you know, there's other candidates. I think, you know, Schroeder had some good moments. Um, that's probably belittling how good he was, but, but I think Romeo is, I think they like him in that spot of kind of a, not someone who's going to be heavier with the ball, but is going to move it. He's going to defend well. So yeah, I'm kind of leaning Romeo at this point and, and, you know, prepare to be completely wrong, but that's where I'm going. What do you think? Um, no, that's the, that's the lineup I had. I, if, if Peyton Pritchard, didn't have uh, the broken face, then I probably would have gone Schroeder to be honest with you, but I think they're not totally sure, you know, how Peyton Pritchard's going to play. And I think they're going to want to reserve Schroeder for the, ba- uh, the bench as a result of that, you know, somebody coming in off. And I, I still think there's a high likelihood that that's the case uh, for him a good majority of the season, but I think there's an argument for him to be in that starting lineup. And, and I might've made that argument, uh, had Peyton been uh, not smashed. So uh, with that in mind, we, we've heard a lot from uh, Ime about doing a big lineup and wanting bigs out there. I think the only potential sneak attack in lieu of Romeo would be, you know, uh, hurting Gomez. There's seriously a chance there. And uh, I know that's where they started the preseason, but they might want to keep somebody like Grant Williams on the bench. But honestly, I think Langford earned it. In, there's a spot uh, for him in this lineup and he shot his way and played his way and showed confidence throughout the preseason to earn that. So I think even from just as simply, like, even if it wouldn't have been the choice that they'd make in games, two, three, four, five matchups dictating the, you know, I don't think that that's really an issue for Langford tomorrow night, but, um, but sometimes matchups, but I think regardless, of all of that, I think Ime wants to to reward a player who probably played as good as anybody consistently every game of the preseason, and so he gets the call. Yeah, I know. I think that's I think that's a good way of looking at it. Uh, I think that he, you know, I I, I kind of got a little bit of I don't know I don't want to say flack, but I think there was some support there too from other corners that I, I think there's a lot of people sleeping on Romeo. You know, I, yeah. I, we talked quite a bit about him, and and I think. 
it kind of it came before <laughs> we those had two even games. more on twitter right we had our right well our that's the kind of conversation what... with byron i was like don't step yeah. on langford and then yeah. he goes off the next night so. but right and and so i posted that and 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 then you know we kind of got going on that and and then you know stuff starts happening people you know and i just felt like I listened to another podcast that was basically putting him fifth out of all the, all, all of the, the young guys. And admittedly, I mean, look, he's had a star cross start to his career. Let's, I mean, I'm not going to bury the lead on that. It's, it's, it's obvious. He's, he's really struggled um, with injuries and, and opportunities. And I mean, there's just a whole bunch of reasons why it hasn't gone well. I, it's pretty, it's pretty clear. Like, it's not like a surprise. That that's the case. But, you know, he still is the 14th pick. He's defended his butt off when he's had opportunities, to, at least on the defensive end, which probably was the biggest question going into it. And it really what was left is can he shoot and can he generate enough offense to make himself worthwhile? And the shooting certainly helps. But to me, the, the real trick with Romeo's, the Romeo experience is can he get the ball in his hands, get downhill and create offensive opportunities for himself and others? And I think we saw that in the preseason. That to me is the trick of, OK, now we can start to build off that. And now can we can we take that and, and turn that into something that's that's a little bit greater? And I, and I think that that's pretty clear. Um that that path is there for him um, if, if he if he continues playing the way he has. Um, and that's no not to denigrate Pritchard or Neesmith, who I think also had good preseasons as well. Um, mm-hmm. Both all, both of those guys earned, I think, more of a look and, and obviously made everyone kind of say, well, maybe we don't need Josh Richardson. Um, <laughs> his vaccination you, status is helping that too, by the way. But, Pritchard, anyway. Pritchard's shooting... Definitely. If Langford hadn't been nailing the three ball as well, mm-hmm. Pritchard shooting, Pritchard shooting definitely puts him just because they're going to, especially if they're going to go in this double big lineup, you know, in general, his shooting can open things up quite a bit. Now, if you are going to go Horford and, and uh, Lob Williams, uh, there really isn't a spot to put a Pritchard or a Neesmith or a Langford, but I, I can see where, based on health, especially Rob, like, let's see how that goes, that they're going to slot somebody in there and they're going to want, if they do take out one of those bigs, they're definitely going to want another shooter because they're going to be moving Tatum a lot closer to the basket. So yeah, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, I know. I think that's right. And, and, and to that end too, let's also say that the, the Tatum playmaker stuff the the, the nuggets reports, of, you mean yeah the nuggets of that are really helpful for his development and growth i mean look i i'm not i'm not expecting his his high side outcome is larry joe bird over my shoulder here um you know if he turns into a playmaker on par with you know Kawhi leonard or or you know that sort of be like wow great exciting that's that's really great i think there's a higher upside for him offensively than that um but at least you know set the expectations low but i think the way he's picking out guys and the way he's kind of taking his teammates off guard in terms of how well he's able to to find guys and see things and also his approach his approach being so much more about finding guys and not forcing it that's like game changing level stuff in terms of moving him from a guy who's in that 10 to 15 range of the best to really up top five, you know, without question um, and closing that gap, I suppose, on the young guy list with, uh, with Luca. Yeah. Um, yeah. The playmaking is going to be, it's going to be huge for the team, not just his development, but huge for the team. It's going to be huge for Jalen Brown. Mm-hmm. It's going to be huge for, continuing to reinforce and quell, you know, this like manufactured sort of competition for who's the alpha dog on the team between them two. Like there's going to be so many reasons that that would be healthy for the organization. But um, in general, it's interesting that the three ball shooting is coming from these younger players because that will also put Tatum in a leadership position because he's going to be feeding these other younger players, mm-hmm. not necessarily the vets. And, you know, it's Neesmith, it's Langford, 
and it's Pritchard. It's all these younger guys that they're actually getting all that floor spacing from. Uh, we heard the other day that Neesmith broke uh, Tatum's record for the most consecutive three point attempts without missing two in a row. I can't remember what 200 number it was. 44. Ridiculous. 244. 244. Okay. Yeah. Can you imagine. And then somebody else tweeted exactly what I thought at that moment. Like the minute I read that, I was like, Tatum's going to go out there immediately and, and 50. put that, put that <laughs> one back down. And I, I can't remember who tweeted it, but I was like, yeah, that, I think that must be what everybody was thinking. Like Tatum ain't going to let that stand. Um, but uh, I guess we'll wait and see if we hear anything about that record again later. But that's, a, you know, the fact is, is Tatum had the record. Neesmith came in and, and challenged it and got pretty pumped up. He's a competitor. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we already know how, you know, solid of a shooter Tatum is. Mm-hmm. But um, Neesmith's got a real, a real shot at space in that floor. Langford in the preseason and then Pritchard all the way back to summer league. Just oh, on yeah. fire and the, yeah. the range. That's the one that is the difference between Pritchard and Neesmith and Langford, though, is he can literally be almost four steps back. He's yeah. he's not quite Steph Curry, but he's in that ridiculous range mm-hmm. from three and being able to knock him down. And um so I, I think uh I think that also kind of plays into it that if Tatum's feeding those guys, they knock it down. It also builds Tatum's confidence that he's got younger guys that he can rely on. It gives the younger guys who just keep who need to keep building confidence, more confidence. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's the way that I see it really impacting the entire team and their success. And I, and I think, uh, I think when you look at last year's team, right. The difference is they didn't have the safety blanket, right? So if this was last year, let's assume you forget last year ever happened. Um, I don't, I don't know how you can, cause there's so many things have happened between last year and I'd like to forget the last two year. years, honestly. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's kind of a blur, <laughs> so right? Many reasons. Yeah. yeah. But, but if you were, if you were just to ignore last year and, and you've got young guys in Romeo Pritchard and Neesmith coming out of the preseason, hot shooting the ball. Well, off of a good, you know, summer league and all that. What? your feelings about that season forthcoming are just completely different than last year where you had that weird thing where there's, you know, you're, it's a short turnaround and no summer league and you're drafted no and then all of a sudden five no minutes shooting. later. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, okay. So take that. Okay. And say, maybe this is a true representation of who those young players are as players. I think that's a fair, I think that's a very fair read on things to say, you know, this is who Pritchard was going to be. This is who Neesmith was going to be. This is who Romeo is. Um, And if you say that, and now you also have safety blankets, safety blankets in the, in the way of Hernan Gomez and, and Josh Richardson and Schroeder. So if they don't have, if they don't hit, You've got guys who are, you know, medium, mediocre players. At, you know, I mean, obviously Schroeder, you know, uh, we know he can do more. He's a sixth man. But you've got something there if they, you know, they forget how to tie their shoelaces. But if they don't, <laughs> if you don't need those safety blankets, what does your future look like, right? What is your your rotation looks like a team that has, <laughs> you know, guys who were – you know, who have the potential to be much more than what we thought they were, or maybe as they were portrayed to be. And I think that that's kind of the, the, the paradigm shift. These are the same guys. There's no difference a year ago to where they are now. The difference is they've had the opportunity. They're building off opportunity and the Celtics have a break glass in and case the, of emergency yeah, the, option, the team which they didn't have them. a year ago. And right. should we kill I'm going to, as the, as a Danny Ainge defender, should we kill Danny Ainge for his broken roster construction? I'll kill him. I, I, I'll hate the, the Tristan Thompson and the, and um, the Teague signings. Sure. But you know, <laughs> these three guys are still talented players and we, and Grant has shown up, I think decently as well. If that's the case, does that make you take a different look to, at, at what you had last year? Maybe, maybe not. I'm just saying, like, I think 
there's just like this, oh, it's so different. It's not different, really. It's Schroeder, it's Vernon Gomez, and it's um, um, Josh Richardson. And there's still the, 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 the jury is still out as to whether or not how, how much those guys will impact this team this coming year. And I know people yeah. still agree with that, but that's how I feel. Well, it's not, it's not all that different than last year, but, um, and it's still a double big. Yeah. Double big. <laughs> Justin's frozen here. So hopefully he's saying that still got the double bigs, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. So while he's frozen, right, uh, he's really thinking about his point here. He's trying to get to, I'm sure. Mark there is he's smart. Back. He's back. It froze on you there for a second, Justin, just so you know. Why You froze. Well, my, audios, my audio and video are going to be good when you download this. Right. But you're going to be frozen. Oh, you're frozen. Ooh. Freeze him out. Let's see what happens. Freeze him out. We'll have to find out when we get this thing down. What I, bet anyway, both are, I bet both of them are fine. <laughs> <laughs> I bet both of them are fine. Yeah. And nobody even knows what happened. And we're both talking over there. each other. <laughs> How are you? Oh, that's so funny. You were like, hey, why did he finish that thought? Yeah. He just had a chance to talk. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. Got to love Zoom. Yeah. Uh, all I was saying was it it isn't all that different, except um, that you don't have you've anointed, you know, Marcus Smart. You don't have Kemba Walker in and out. The double big lineup is the same, except you have one that can shoot. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately, when you go back to the Danny point that you were making, Danny deserves a ton of credit and a ton of, a ton of respect for his ability to find mm-hmm. talent and draft talent. You cannot argue that. One draft does not throw the baby out with the bath water. He's been an absolute stud. The, his ability to trade and move around in the draft outside of the year that he had all the, the glut of middling picks. And, you know, that's not always, you don't always see those get moved for any major crazy. Oh, look at me. I traded 22, 24, 26. Now I have the second pick in the draft. Like that never happens. So, you know, there's times where, you know, people don't want more picks either. Not every team wants a glut of picks. They want one really good player. Mm-hmm. The value isn't, re- you know, they always they would always say, oh, there's more swings of the bat. Yeah, there's more swings of the bat, but you're batting 150. And <laughs> you're going to take, you know, batting 500 on an all-star at the top of the draft than batting 150 three different times because your batting average is still 150. Just because you got to the plate three times, you might get, you know, one hit or whatever, but um, you're still going to take the higher percentage shot and you're trying Mm -hmm. to win the game. And so uh, one swing of the bat is what it is. So anyway, uh, you got to give him that credit. I, you know, I think he worked with what he could last off season. The biggest thing was the, the Hayward, the Hayward moves. I think they got a little over cocky. Yep. That that's the criticism that you can definitely throw at them. Yeah. But, but you know, Brad went out and did all these things and made all these moves and da 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 da, da you know, and, and maybe Danny would have been able to do the same things. Maybe not. You know, there is this whole reputation of can't let, can't get fleeced by Danny age. It's that's a right. bad look. And so if anything, you know, maybe that's a reason why we went down this path, you know, who knows, who knows why this transition happened. But um, I do like that Ima um, sent some messages you know, during training camp to some of the players, you know, like, look, you guys got what you wanted, but now you get what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to hear, I don't, it it was definitely contextualized in the, in the media that Marcus didn't really take kindly to that situation, but um, you know, he's your coach and Mm -hmm. a little more heavy handedness. I don't think is a bad thing, especially with a younger group who, you know, other than proving themselves when the vets that they were trying to supplant moved out, once they had that role, you know, they've got, they've got a lot to prove. And, and so I think having a coach that's a going to, you know, kind of come with a, maybe not an iron fist, but he's, you know, he isn't going to let them bully him, you know, for better or for worse. So as long as he gets along with Tatum and Brown, I'm okay with that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and it's, yeah, that's, you're right. And I, and I'm, 
again, I think obviously you have to, you know, suspend Spartan that circumstance. What's interesting to me is how he did it and how he's operating. He's mu- he's operating much more in the press than Brad ever did. Yeah. You know, is he uh, making an issue of it? Is he, you know, is he going Doc Rivers and like let sending messages out that way and leaking stuff? No, 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 no. He's not going to that extent. But he's very clearly making people know this happened. This is what it is. Matter of fact, it's yeah, over. He's not saying nothing to see here. Right. He's saying this is what it is and we're not going to make it more than it is. Yeah. Which I think is good. I think that's, you know, I think that's a, a reasonable. I don't like the whole make exam, you know, make, you know, make a big, you know, huge to do about it. It's what happened. Let's smart deal with the, the, the fallout from it. And, you know, it's his mistake. And so it's, it's, it's up to him to kind of own up to that. And, um, you know, it's curious timing, obviously, with the, the, the captain's issue um, kind of still, you know, simmering and not really sure where that's going to go. Um, it's not happening, dude. It's good. I bet. What do you think? I bet, th- what do you I bet they happen? bail on it. Huh? You think they're not going to do it? They're not going to do yeah, captains? I think they're going to bail on it. I think the only way they wouldn't do it, I mean, just because he was speaking in favor of it, is if I don't guys, think the players want it. The guys who would be captain say, "I don't no, want it." I, right. So let's just let's just say Jalen and Jason go to Ime, and I think really you're talking about Jalen, just because of his who he is and the way Jalen, I, you know, Jalen think, and Marcus and Horford are the three front runners. I think Jason is is not that far behind. Oh, I think he should be there. I don't think he wants it. I don't know if it's up to him, though. I, 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 no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say what I just said. I, let me back up. Let me retract that statement. What I'm saying is I think that the um, – I think he's thinking a lot more about his leadership um, and I think it's also being thrown at him a little bit. Which I'm not sure which it's kind of partly what you're saying too, a little bit, which is like, he's not trying to like seek out leadership roles, but I don't, I don't know that if you're the best player at that level of trying to be a top five guy, you can run from that. And I don't know that he's running from it. I just don't think he's seeking out the vocal leader leadership role. I, I think that's the distinction he's trying to make at the moment, but I think he sees value in, in leading. Um, but just not as, you know, kind of the rah, rah, you know, guy that, um, I think a lot of fans and a lot of media, you know, kind of want, because it makes it easier for them to understand how you lead in that capacity. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right about that. Um, I just don't know what are the responsibilities of the cap from Ema's, you know, like, yeah. Like if it's a figurehead, this team doesn't want it, right? No, there you go. So that's where we kind of come back to that vocal piece, and and so I, you know, I think it's like this combination of somebody who's already kind of elevated in the players' union, you know, representation. Somebody who's already kind of a league-wide person, you know, who's maybe even spoken out on issues outside of the game. So I can see where you know, Jalen, where he may not be as vocal, like his captainship has a lot more to do with, like, he's an entrepreneur, you know, he's very, um, you know, involved in, you know, uh, movements outside of the NBA, you know, Mm -hmm. say that kind of globally, right. You know, he's, um, you know, he contributes to the players union. It's just, you know, he's kind of got this really broad, He loves to play chess, right? That was the worst thing that you could ever draft in a player. Somebody who plays chess (laughs) and reads books. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I feel like, you know, the, the way I'm not saying Jalen Brown's a perfect person or I even know him well enough, but there's definitely been this, he, he really does everything he can to enrich his life. And he does seem to make a pretty concerted effort to improve other people's lives. Right. So I can see a C on somebody for that reason, who maybe not be a vocal leader. And then the problem is, is that that's where I kind of lump Horford in, but you could kind of give a captain to a guy who's been in the league a long time. Who's still kind of a silent leader. So I can see Horford kind of getting it. 
And then you look at somebody like Smart, who is the vocal leader. So the heart and the soul and the effort and the hustle. And so I can kind of see that. But that's really where I land on those three. But then you've got this issue where like, well, Brown's got the captain, but Tatum doesn't. So now that's a problem and it's contributing to the bullshit machine. So then you kind of have to toss Brown out and you got to go back. Do they to like Hartford each other? How Wait, much do they, do they, they like? Each other? How, do they like how much they, you know, who's eats, how they eat? You know, does Jalen like to use a fork and knife when he eats a candy bar or what's the. God, how much navel What a great game. opening night game. Tatum, you went off for 60 points. You beat yeah. the shit out of Kemba Walker. That must have felt good. Evan Fournier only got 10 minutes, but I'm sure that still felt good too. Yeah. And at the same time, what we really want to know is how do you feel about Jalen Brown having yeah. the captainship and you are kind of <laughs> left sitting off to the side on this one? You know, does yeah. that put a strain on your relationship with <laughs> Ime right. as he tries to establish himself <laughs> as the head coach of this young club where we yeah. know everybody is sort of catty and bitter because they're not mature. You know, can you please tell us about that? Or should we just direct questions like that to Ben Simmons? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you went two for 10 in the first quarter. Is that because you were upset that you didn't get to shake hands with the referees at the start of the game? Dude, Your thoughts. It's just... Talk about, talk about, talk about how... <laughs> It's like, gosh, like, it's just so, it's so over the top. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but I, I, I mean, I think, I, I think I, they're in a, yeah. I think they're in a lose lose situation with this captainship. I think they, yeah, I, I think if they, especially after the, the smart thing, like, what are you going to do now? You're going to give it to them a week and a half, two weeks into the season. So to, that you set the right thing. Now it's, now it's this negative. Mm-hmm. Right. It's this whole negative. Like, I bet they wish they had just shut the hell up on this thing <laughs> and announced it once they decided it internally or not. The only thing people love more than how much did Jalen and Jason, you know, like each other and, you know, hang out at each other's houses and, you know, do play match together um, is whether or not who is the captain. Like, that's like yeah. pastime right there. Like, it's, it's a distraction, dude. Jesus, it's, it's it's such a just dis- both of those things are a complete distraction. Yeah. And you know, um, yeah, it is what it is. All right. I'm gonna move on from that because um I did not do I've done a really nice job of being optimistic this show. Boom, boom, boom. You know, uh, but it's nothing to do with how good they are. So it's no, no, just no. it's it's no, it's ridiculous nonsense. I, yeah. I I think you're okay. I think you're still positive. No, I just I just meant. Yeah, but I could go down a dark path pretty quickly. Okay, I agree. Let's stop you know, that. And, and I'm saying I've been I've been really good. <laughs> yeah, you know, Rightly through so. 25 minutes of the show, and you know, last couple of shows, you know, argh, argh, positive, day, positive, right, right. That's what I'm saying. So let's let's stay on that train. So you wanted to have some fun on this show. I do. And, and positive. so, so <laughs> make it positive. <laughs> Uh uh-huh. we're skating the line uh all right so why don't you we're gonna we're well, gonna do a little debate here or maybe well, more I, of a discussion i don't, I don't know I, I don't even really see the debate till maybe the bottom of the list so why don't you tell them what so. we're talking about with the list well so okay so let just as as everyone probably knows the this in the 75th anniversary there's a lot of talk about you know top 75 players league wide right and so the Celtics announced last week that they are going to have their top 15 players um, announced, which, you know, there may be some, there may be a lot of overlap and you wonder how many would be on the Celtics 15 that aren't on the NBA 75 or vice versa. Um, because I think there's like, probably a lot of, a lot of overlap and maybe a hundred percent possibly like um, Jordan Crawford like Jordan Crawford and Gigi Jatome. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, but so just as kind of having fun here, Brandon Hunter, and, and there's nothing everyone likes more than lists of players when you're on a podcast. So you can't really see it. So if you're not an auditory, you know, just, just take a pen, pen and paper and start writing these names down. Uh, or you can go to at CNS at CSL underscore Duke on Twitter and you can see this as well. Um, but okay. So my came up with my list, right? So my list, 
Um, Wait, did you write down a list? Oh, I had this on Twitter. There's the whole thing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you've already got your list. I got my there. list. Right. Okay. So I okay. figured we'd go with my then list. I'm just going to criticize your list. That's what, I, that's what I was really hoping you'd do, is just criticize okay, me. That's really the easiest way to do this. It's just you know, it's a for you to come at me. get along. You know what I mean? So, like, which one of us gets to be the captain? Right. I want you to come up my neck on this is really what I'm looking for. I really want to be bleeding out. And yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. So now, are these in any particular order? Is uh, the most You know, question. kind of, sort of, but not really. I mean, yes. It doesn't have to be. It's but, Yeah, it doesn't have to be. In, every five is sort of in a ballpark. Right. Like, for example, Russell Bird is like one, two. Right. Right. And I think you can make an argument in either direction. But I think most people would go Russ one bird two, okay. So that's where I think it, Hondo three. I think. Can I you ask know, you a question? Yeah. So when you say when you say, I would go Russell one and and Bird two. Yeah. Um. But, but are you incorporating everything they've ever done? No. For the organization or just playing well, playing years? Uh, playing years for the Celtics. Okay. So for example, Max. Would Max be on here because he's been a broadcaster for 25 years or because he played in a period of time where he was. Oh, so you are counting MVP. his announcing years. No, I'm not. That's what I'm saying. Okay, right, right. Not right, counting right. Heinsohn's years as, as a coach, not counting his a broadcaster. You know, I, this is just Perfect. as a player. This is your yep, moment. As a player wearing a jersey. Period and and not so tiny Archibald, great player, all NBA player before he got here all-star player when he's here but you know his best years were in kc uh-huh garnett's best years Just, so not in last Boston. question last question does the number of years that they played for the celtics count in that not just how good the yeah. years were but the longer they played for the celtics you know, the more years with the Celtics gives them a higher ranking. I think so. Yeah. Okay, I, good. You know, that's but how there, I would do it. But there's instances where and, and anyone with three years or less, I did not count. So, for example, Kyrie Irving is not on my list. <laughs> it wouldn't be. He has no business. He's on a different list, but not that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. 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 Okay, so well, this I is can't, I can't wait till we talk about Ray Allen, but let's start up <laughs> on to the top of the list again. A different list, wrong list. <laughs> Good. All right, so we'll, so here, okay, so we got Russell Bird. All right, easy, no questions, right? No questions. Yep. You go with those two. John Havlicek, Hondo, number three, all-time leader in points, a billion MV, uh, a billion championships. Two eras, I mean, maybe not the best player at any point. Maybe 73, but but really a consistently great player. A sixth man to an all-star starter to linchpin of the team. The, the longevity there is just hard to ignore. All right. This is where things start to – I got some pushback on this. and Because of your order or because of the people that you've selected because for of the, the final order. 11 slots? Okay. Because so of the order. I don't think we have to get totally hung up on the order. but Right. But uh, I think but for okay. some people, the, the, the tier thing, right? Well, so, I hope you're going Pierce next. I'm not. I'm going with Bob Cousy next. See, and, all right. I'm looking at a similar list. Yep. And Cousy was definitely – low on this list yeah. in my opinion yep um and Kuzi had is, paul, i had think paul Kuzi, pierce retired as a celtic yeah the entire then i think you i think you'd have to have gone with pierce here i yeah. love kuz because he totally embodied that style you know for all those years of just win 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 yep. and every highlight you watch of red Auerbach basketball has kuzi at the helm right. running the break right um but, but I think, you know, you look at the numbers for Paul scoring numbers, the fact that he made it through really lean times, you know, and, uh, and, and then still won the championship and everything else. I'm going with, I'm going with Paul ahead of Kuzi. That's fair. I, I, the, I, I, I did kind of battle those two names back and forth. The reason I went with Kuzi is 
he had, he was an MVP um, and, you know, kind of an unquestioned one of the top players. He was really the top player, top marketable player in the NBA through the fifties. Um, yeah. That's, you know, and it, so the, the whole thing is I'm talking about guys in their era. Okay. So yeah, if Bob Cousy, if 1957, Bob Cousy came to the NBA today without any training, any nutrition, any workouts, without knowing that you can actually dribble on the side of the ball, which people don't understand. They get on him because he dribbled on top of the ball. That's because if you had the ball on the side, it's a travel. So right. like th- there's like people like really hate on Bob Cousy. And I think it's completely no, absurd. He played the, he, yeah, it's totally. Absurd. He was a trendsetter for that time. Like, let's just respect it for what it was. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're not as good as 2001. I know. Like, why didn't they have nuclear weapons in the 1800s? You know, I mean, it's just like, come on, <laughs> let's just be right. fair with what right. stay in the era. And in that era, he was, he was a truly great player and changed the way the game was played. Yeah, so I got Pierce. Sense. So then Pierce after that, which again, I think he's gotta be top five. That's more of a longevity argument though, than a top of the game argument. And I think it's harder in modern day or more modern days to have that top player. Cause there was more competition, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You yep. know, more teams, more all that. So it, it's I'm super hard to be interested there. to see where you have Tommy Heinsohn. So let's move on. All right. I'm... Kevin McHale, number six, which is maybe a little yeah. high for some people, but mm. for his moment, I mean, he was there through the whole one, all three championships from 84 to 88, you know, the second best player on the, on, on the team, certainly, but some of the best teams in NBA history, he's the guy that had more teams had trouble stopping than Bird. I mean, again, Barkley's saying that he was the best I ever played against. So you got McHale. Yeah, they'd then be I like went, saying that with the Lakers, yeah. you wouldn't put Kareem in there just because Magic was right. there. You can't exactly. do that. You can't right. separate I mean, that. Kareem had his moment there, but it, there's, there's distinctions right. there, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is where I think Garnett is next for me. And it's a little high. He didn't win nearly as many championships as a lot of guys I'm going to talk about in a minute. Yeah, but his impact on the culture and and the marketing piece. Night and day. Yeah. Yeah. Like night and day changed the whole view of the Boston Celtics overnight. And and really to this day, what he did is the stuff that the kids are playing now, the players are playing now, what they grew up with. There's there's something about the Boston Celtics because of that guy unbelievable defender should have been MVP yeah. in 2008. You, you, you bump him up the list. If not just for the folklore of his yeah. name during yeah. his time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. I so Heinsohn Heinsohn's next. Great. Yeah. So you have him higher than a lot of people. A lot and, of people don't have but, that high, but, but he, but yeah, yep. the first few years of his career, he was the scorer on that team. I mean, he was Dude, the guy he who came in it up. as a rookie and dominated. Right. He's rebounding dominated. the hell out of the ball. Rookie of the year in 57. Um, you know, his career got cut short a little bit, but he was he was a crucial piece for those 50s, late 50s teams, early 60s Celtics. Um, you know, injuries kind of kind of slowed him. And I think he would have been higher up on a lot of these scoring lists and whatnot if he was able to finish out his career. So I got Sam Jones re- next. Uh, OK, he's yeah. the scorer. I mean, he's the scorer of those of the, kind of as Tommy Ebbs. Sam is kind of rising as as the key scorer for those 60s teams. Why not Cowan's? Well, the problem with Cowens for me is the end. His end in Boston, he's part of those really bad Wicks and Row teams. The the departure in, in 80 to, to go to, you know, kind of retire and walk away and just a very strange kind of finish. On the other hand, an MVP, someone who won two titles. So Cowens smaller, has, smaller center who small played center, the right. Celtic style of center. Right. And right. took took them into that era, coming out of having one of the best centers ever and the yeah. best center power forward combo that they had until maybe the eighties came back around. Like yeah. that's a tough position to be it, in. It I, is. I'll give I, you Sam Jones ahead of Cowens, but he's got to come in right after that. And I and I totally like when I look at this list, and I that's the one I kind of look at and say, "Geez, I really feel like Cowens should be higher because of what he did." Like you said, changing the culture. He's yeah, the big, you know, he, big fan as, as good as Honda was, it was Cowens and Tommy coming in that changed the way things worked in the 70s. Is Billy Howell going to get in your top 15? No, not at all. No, 
not, not even close not there nope nope not even the 20 you know because I, I had some others that didn't make the list that i kind of talk about but all right where are, I, I went with bill sharman are we, Char- are we bill sharman nine? bill sharman the running mate there for coups in the 50s i mean he's not on your list who's that bailey howell sharman sharman's next Sharman's oh, after okay Cowens. what number are we at well, is 11 that 10? I'm down to 11. Oh, that's now. 11. Wow, yeah. we're getting lean. Okay. We're getting lean. Yeah. I mean, you know, but but MVP, uh, uh, All Star. Mm. Um, you know, again, the score before in the backcourt, the score next to Kuz before Sam Jones kind of takes off. Um, important player in the 50s. A very important player. Those backcourts of the Celtics really were were were. It was Charmin and Kuzi, and and they just didn't have the front court defensively to to kind of. So moving on there, Parrish and DJ. Now Parrish gets the nod over DJ at 12 versus 13 because obviously the three championships as opposed to just the two for DJ. But also his the latter end of his career, you know, the, the 95 season, the 94 season, um, you know, the, the years are 94, 90, wait, hold on, 94 season, 93 season. He was great. He was great those last few years. And I don't mean to yeah. say like that dis- you know, kind of discredits, but he had to keep Kareem in check. That's, you know, people want to talk about Wilt versus Russell. Oh, I think Kareem, Paris could have been higher up that list. Absolutely. Honestly, but but he his, what he was, could. the thing is, is he, what I mean, he think about it. We just do, put Garnett ahead of Parrish. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, there's well, a lot he, of people that are not doing that. No. As but, great as Kevin was. That's why I asked you the longevity question. Right. You know, and that that may or may not put a parish ahead of KG. Absolutely. Depending on how you weight that. But the impact, like that's that the thing I'm kind of weighting heavily is how high were you at the top of the game? Chief was never a top five guy, maybe even a top 10 guy, you could argue. Always there, always right in the mix, no doubt, because that consistency throughout. But he was never, I mean, and like I said, Garnett should have won MVP in 08 without the injuries in 09. They went back to back. And we all know the story. And then um, you have DJ at 12, 13, 13. So DJ is a tough one for me. DJ and the next two could almost all three could be interchangeable. Let's just They're, consider it that way because okay. I really want to get to who you left off. So DJ, then Jojo, then Rondo. Whoa. Yeah. A lot of people Whoa. are like Rondo. Rondo yeah, ahead Rondo. of Reggie Lewis. No, Reggie. No, no. I, Reggie I'm was saying, enough. I'm just saying Rondo yeah. ahead of Reggie. Oh, sure. Yeah. So let me just, let me just kind of ah. sit. Let me sit in these three for a second. All right. Okay. So first of all, Joe, uh, to G- DJ, when they lost tiny, they needed that infusion of talent, right? The 84 does not happen without DJ. Arguably, 85 isn't the same without DJ. Now, things start to fall off, 86, 87, 88. He's not the same player the first two seasons, I think. I think he starts to he starts to age, which is which is you know very natural. And I may be biased against DJ because so much of his latter years are kind of what sticks in my mind. But he was so important to 84 and 85 that it was it's difficult to to put that aside. Um, and you know, he's the best defensive player. You put him on magic, and that slows magic down enough to slow down the Lakers. Um, Jojo was crucial to the 70s Lakers. So it's crucial to the 70s Celtics. You know, he's he's the guy pushed the pace, he's got that that athletic build that looks like he could have you know walked off a football field. Um, smooth shooter. I mean, it's all right there. Rondo is the controversial one, right? Rondo is the controversy. But you look at Rondo's numbers. Rondo's numbers are better than Tiny's numbers. I know. It's crazy. His numbers are better than Tiny's numbers in the early 80s. When you take that number from 09 to 12, Rondo is a better player than Tiny was. And no one wants to believe it, but it's true. You go on on a, a basketball reference. So those three are there. And then you look at some of those other guys. Um, it's hard to, you know, the, the biggest one that I kind of looked at that I felt like who maybe should be on the list is Max. But I had a hard what time. What about Ed McCauley? No. No. No, I didn't put Antoine Walker? No way. 
<laughs> so let me just no ask you though. Freaking way. <laughs> when you talk about numbers, why yeah. not Antoine? It's so inefficient. Incredibly inefficient. I, I, I get like, the inefficiency. inefficient. You know, I don't I don't want I don't want Antoine in my 15. I just don't know <laughs> I don't how know. Rondo gets in there and Antoine's not even in the conversation. Well, let's look at let's look at Rondo, right? Rondo was the best player. The Who best playoff. Shoot? Hold on. He was the best playoff player from 2009 to 2012. The best yeah. playoff player, KG, yeah. Paul, Ray, Rondo. It's not, that's just, that's just what it is. But don't and you think it has something to do with the people that were around seasons. him? I don't He's think, I don't up. think you're scoring 40 points against the heat because, you know, Paul Pierce is guarding, you know, you know, is drawn and all that. LeBron. I mean, yeah, I, you don't the way he was dominating those games, it's not just like he was putting up 20 and 10. He was getting 40 points. And for a guy who, who, like you said, can't shoot it. I really think the Rondo like controlling things, like somehow that's gotten lost over time. I think he's, he's really his, he was devastating for those five years. That's not stuff tiny was doing. That's not stuff DJ was doing. You know, I mean, he was the guy. It, All right. It's, it's crazy. So anyway, how long then before Tatum kicks Rondo off oh, this list? I, I don't think it's long. I mean, I like, think that you're, if they make the Eastern, if they make the NBA finals, but lose this year, does, does that take Tatum's? Cause think about it. Think about Tatum every year. They made the postseason, <laughs> right? Yeah. Every year. And he's had some pretty big, postseason performances like when they kicked the crap out of philly um yeah I, but know. he's still like i have a hard time and with projection on it on a, it's, on, it's for, not, for a for a franchise that's been around 75 years i have a hard time with living with projections that much it's not projection it's how many years did rondo play for the celtics and how many years has tatum played for the celtics he's pretty close already like, yeah. what does he need? Two more seasons yeah. before he's matched Rondo's longevity? Like, I'm just saying, see. Oh, if six, all things are equal, six, when they play seven. the same amount of seasons, yeah, the two Celtics, more seasons, two more two seasons, more seasons yep. right? You're right. So, in two more seasons, I don't think there's a question. Rondo, you're out of here. Probably. I think you're probably right. I think <laughs> you're probably right. Probably. Definitely. I mean, think about the people you're, you're, you're saying he's gone past. I, so, Let's talk about the emissions, right? He's the guys I left off. I well, talked Tatum about, leapfrogs these people in two uh, years. If you've got Rondo at fifteen, well, but but just look at the. I'm just saying, it's not just Rondo you're talking about here. We're talking about Frank Ramsey. We're talking about Satch Sanders. We're talking about Max Finals MVP. Jump on my yeah, back, but there's boys, nothing 84. about Tatum. Tiny versus Rondo. Isaiah Thomas. Like, it doesn't pull Rondo out and you swap in one of these guys. No, no, no. My, I, that's not my Isaiah point. definitely deserves. I get your point. My point is that Rondo is out in two years because Tatum. Yeah, but they're I mean, not doing a 77th. <laughs> they're doing it in 75. 77th. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's the 75th anniversary is why they're doing. This I see what you, I got it. You're so, not going to change this list. You're saying. Right. This is a snapshot in time and it can't, it can't be revisited in two years. I mean, if. I'm making that list. We're making that list for the 77th anniversary of the NBA. Yeah. I mean, I think you're right. I think I would say, you know, Tatum isn't probably just at 15. He's probably closer to like seven or eight at that point, you know? Um, but so, so the why challenge does he make for, the list today? Yeah. The, the challenge for Tatum to me is that how do you take team success? How do you get enough team success to beat out guys who've won ranks? Everybody on this list has won a ring or two or three or 11. Okay. Um, how do that's you, a pre, so that's, that's a prerequisite. Tough. You know, Tatum's well, got to get a ring to get in here. Yeah. I, it's pretty tough. I mean, you got to have pretty this special. season. Does he, are you giving him this season? Can we do this at the end of the I year? Would. If the Celtics okay. win the championship, yeah. Rondo is off and Tatum is on deal. That takes Maybe. us perfectly into our wrap-up conversation. 
we've hit about an hour. So I'm going to, I'm going to take us to close. That was fun. That was fun. I don't think I picked you apart like crazy and no. you've got some sound. It's pretty sound, you know, and I don't think where you, I, you know, Hey, it's just, it's nitpicking at that point. I'm surprised <laughs> though. You didn't put Danny Ainge in there too. There's definitely plenty of guys kind of you know on the on the fringe of that conversation but yeah so what are the projection projections for this year because if they win a championship i'm kicking rondo off your list <laughs> I want it's a that simple it's that it's that's, and that's what we want to have happen it right? feels Obviously. like you're targeting rondo i gotta say it, it feels a little bit like you know i'm channeling the, the rondo thing is really like I believe you said once he can't even hit the backboard. I think on a shot it was. I think that's what my dad said. No, no, no. You know, you said it. I remember. <laughs> this was not a dad head. This was this was a jughead original. I remember. <laughs> yeah, because it happened. It definitely happened. Oh man, it might not have happened as often as I liked to. Uh, right, right. Yes. Give it, give of it course. crap, but of yeah. course. <laughs> okay, so anyway, anyway, what are your projections you know for the celtics like wh- how many Pain. simple stuff how many games do they win and what seed uh in the eastern conference do they do they get because it's, yeah. I, you know philly would have been a tough contender but i think they're out of that conversation right now they're dysfunctional as all get out yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, so i'm thinking that they are probably I'm a little bullish on him. I think I'm bullish on him. Um, so I'm saying 49 wins. Yeah, I was going to say 48. Um, we always do that. We're always within one. I know. It's crazy. It is um, really weird. We're usually within one game. Yeah. Remember when we were like, Hayward, Kyrie, 55. Yeah. 54. <laughs> uh. I just, I can't go 50. And and I and also the no. COVID thing and not knowing who you miss and all that stuff. But I I like the depth. I think the depth is is good enough. Um, I think Tatum is going to level up this year. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to get out of, out of Brown. Not not bad. I'm just saying like we haven't really seen enough of him in the preseason other than that one you know half where he went you know bananas. Um, so. I, I think that they're going to, they're going to scratch out that, that, you know, kind of 48, 49 win territory, which is a good solid season. Um, I think they're going to be better. I think they're going to be a better regular season team than a postseason team. Um, oh, because, interesting. Because of the youth, I think the youth is not going to quite be there. Um, and so I think it will probably be, you know, second round exit. Um I'd love to think, see him in the I conference think, finals. I but. think there could be a little bit of a move once they see what they have and everything else. That would change. So, things. so, sure. uh, so I, I think that they're, I think Brad has positioned them to potentially make a play mm-hmm. and perform much better in the postseason. So I think we'll have to wait and see, but I still think 48 wins. Um, and I think they're going to land in at that fourth spot. So, yeah. what are your thoughts on what, what seed they get? I would say 48 wins. It's going to be no, close. You said 49. You said I'm 49. sorry, 49. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. 49. It's going to be close. I would, I think they can ego out the third seed. Yeah. I think they can get there. I think it's all going to be pretty close. Three, four, five, six. I think all those, I think it's going to be a go right down to the last day for, for who's going to break through. Um, Who do they play the last, the last week? Who are the teams oh, that are going I know it's so I didn't really think about it till just now. <laughs> let's do our let's do our let's do our predictions for the last week of the season. That's well, it. I, I'm it's more or gonna... less <laughs> I'm more or less thinking about what you just said about yeah. how they're gonna be crammed in in that three through six. So yeah. who are they playing down the stretch? Because that will tell us how much control over their destiny they might have. All right. So the last five games are the Pacers, Wizards, Bulls. Bucks and Grizzlies. Bucks could be resting everybody by that. Yeah, point. I was just gonna say. So, so the Bucks are out of that. The yep. the Grizz are, you know, and Who knows? so the, so so the the, the 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 punching team that they're pl- the punt the team they're punching against 
most likely in that three through six, if anybody mm-hmm. is Indiana. Maybe the Bulls. Bulls yeah, too. maybe the Bulls. You know, the Bulls, they, they went out and got all that talent, but that could also fail spectacularly too. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not a big believer in what they have there. So uh, I don't think they have enough defense personally, but yeah, I, I agree. I think it, it could come down to that, that last week and trying to figure out, you know, the jockeying for position thing. Um, the Celtics do have a tough, um, they have a tough December, you know, kind of looking at the schedule, um, you know, they've got the jazz, they got, uh, the Lakers, they got the Clippers, they got the Suns, they got the Bucks, they got the Warriors, the Sixers again, the Bucks again, the Clippers again, the Suns again. I mean, their December is kind of hellish. Um, one, January is much nicer to them with some, you know, playing New Orleans and Charlotte and Detroit and Orlando and things get a lot easier um, in, in, in January. But December is a tough run. Um, yeah, out at the bat, you know, they, it's not too bad, um, in November. So they've got to kind of get going, but if they don't have, if they haven't hit their stride by the start of the month of December, kind of that first, the end of that first full month, I guess it, it could be a slog just looking at the, the type or we're getting to Christmas and we're getting, you know, really optimistic because they're, they're able to put a hurt on some of these teams that maybe we wouldn't think they would be able to certainly playing golden state early on is a good thing uh, before um, you know, they, you know, Clay Thompson comes back. So uh, let's hope that that works out well for them. They got a puncher's chance. Yeah. Puncher's chance. Yeah. I like it. I like that. Yeah, it's all about it's all about health once again, folks. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, and, and it really depth, is. And having depth now. Yeah, but the depth is there. So now it's Could about be. the right players staying healthy. And, and you know, I don't yeah. care how much they've bolstered in the big man department. If you if you're struggling to keep Al Horford and Robert Williams in lineups, um, that's gonna that's gonna take a major toll. Major yeah. toll. And Can, you, Cantor's you can, gonna play more than they think. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody enjoy the first game of the season opening night. Uh, by the time you listen to this, probably that'll be tonight. But uh, I hope everybody enjoys it, has some fun. Celtics basketball, it's back. So's John, so's Justin. That's me. And uh, we will talk to you on the flip side after the start of the season. We see what this team kind of shows us. What what we, I did not get enough in preseason, so I'm glad we're starting the real season. That's going to do it for this week's show. As a reminder, you can support Celtic Stuff Live by following at CSL underscore Tweet Live on Twitter. John is at CSL underscore Duke. I am at CSL underscore Justin. A heartfelt thank you to everybody for tuning in, and as a and, and a heartfelt thank you for tuning in. Honestly, heartfelt thank you that I. We always say it's heartfelt. There it is. It's a heart. <laughs> On behalf of the founder of CLNS Media, Nick Gelso, and my co-host, John Duke, Heart I'm felt. Justin Poulin. Oh, there's the heart. Aww. If you aren't watching on YouTube, please do, too. That was dumb. <laughs> That's going to do it for this edition of Celtic Stuff Live. <laughs>